There are a lot of videos on YouTube about what the weirdest or strangest fruits in the world are. Durian, pandanus, jackfruit, pandanus, red bananas, pandanus, Buddha's hand, or that same photo of pandanus. But now that I've made 500 episodes reviewing fruit from all around the world, I think now it is time to truly see what are the weirdest fruits out there. And that means fruit that has a weird taste to it, a weird look to it, that has a weird use to it, some other stuff that's weird about it. And again, these are all things that I have personally had, so I can attest to their strangeness. And if you'd like more information about any of the fruits that I've talked about in this video, go to the description box below. I'm going to put links to all the individual episodes where I review these in depth. All right, let's get started. It's crazy looking. Look at those roots. Oh, there's a fruit. Number one, uh, pandanus. Okay, fine. Let's get this out of the way. Yes, pandanus is a fruit that looks really cool. It breaks apart into these weird little nuggets. It tastes like artificial banana flavoring and uh, lizards like it a lot. So yeah, fine, it's, it's weird. Let's move on. Like jackfruit and artificial banana. Very fibrous. The flavor's really, really good. The scientific name on this is Solanum uporo. An older name for this was Solanum anthropohagrum, which if you translate that means served with human meat. It doesn't look weird. It doesn't taste weird. But holy mother of God, the history of the cannibal tomato is fascinating. On the island of Fiji, cannibals used to use this tomato relative in order to prepare human flesh. The leaves of the plant would be wrapped around the flesh and then baked on hot stones. This was done in order to make human meat easier to digest. It was believed that if you ate a lot of human meat, it would make you really, really sick. So they would do this to make it edible. Even though a lot of resources online say that it was the fruit that was used on human meat, all the sources of this information actually say it was the leaves, not the fruit. But I did see accounts of the same tribes using the fruit in order to make a sauce. So let's just assume that this little tomato relative was at one time used at least as a condiment on human flesh. I'm just gonna try a little bit on its own. looks like something that, I don't know, they would eat in like the Lord of the Rings or something. It's very like small and cute and like pink. It looks like it should be like candy or something or like a toy. It does not look like real to me. The Ancola is in the same family as avocados and actually shares a lot of the creaminess that an avocado has. Only with this fruit, it's even more milky tasting. They taste kind of like sour cream. In the areas that this grows, people say that it is not edible raw. In order to eat it, you first have to take the fruits and soak them in hot water until the flesh on the outside turns from pink to white. After they change color, just sprinkle a little bit of salt on it and you have a very delicious, although very rich treat vegans, people who are lactose intolerant, this thing would be such an incredible tool to have. So strange. That little girl says that you don't eat this. And he's eating it, apparently. <laughs> is that what it looks like on the inside? Yep, like glue. I like that this girl is just like, don't eat it, don't eat it. And you're like, all right, I'm gonna eat it. Number four, the blueberry. Here is another little pink fruit, but this one you wouldn't want to eat. 
Why? It's extremely slimy. So much so that when I tried to eat this thing, it actually sealed my lips shut. Glueberries actually have a history of not being a fruit that was so much eaten, but a fruit that was used to seal envelopes. However, they are edible. In India, these are called gunda, and the unripe fruit is cooked with spices and then served as a vegetable. Ah, oh, the texture is a booger. And um, flavor, it's milder. Tastes like a little bit more like actual glue. Yeah, I think I'm done with this thing. <laughs> I got like glue all over my hands. Ugh. Ugh. All right, I think I'm done. <laughs> all right, Steven has uh, spotted something. What you got up there, Steven? What is that? Uh, it looks like a urticacea family. Urticacea? Urticacea. Urticacea. That's like a stinging nettle. Stinging nettle. That sounds promising. Stinging nettles are from a genus of plants that have needle-like hairs all over the plant. If you accidentally brush up against one, it will actually inject your skin with a cocktail of chemicals that cause pain. The clinical term for hives, urticaria, actually gets its name from urtica, which is the genus name for this plant. The stinging nettle plant has caused a lot of suffering. And whipping somebody with the stinging nettle is actually a form of torture that has been used. Despite all of that, stinging nettles can be eaten. You can, I believe on some species, prepare the leaves, and the berries are also often edible. They don't really taste like much, and you'll probably get hurt trying to collect them, but there you go. Are yeah. You okay? Yeah, yeah, a little, a little bit of fire. All right. <laughs> so this sucks. Uh, we're just. He just like scrambled across there, like almost got stung, or he yeah. did get stung by insects. Yeah. And yeah, look at burning. that. They're right there. Yeah. This one right here is the Tasmanian mountain berry. What's interesting about this is that this was used as a pepper substitute. Out of all of the reviews I've done on fruits that are also used as spices, the Tasmanian mountain pepper is by far my favorite one. It has a unique chemical compound in it that causes you to feel a heat sensation. Black pepper is hot because it contains a substance called piperine. Chili peppers are hot because it contains capsaicin. Tasmanian mountain pepper, however, contains a more unique source of spice, polygodial. Probably saying all these chemicals wrong, by the way. For those that like spicy food, this is an incredible addition to your pantry. They're hot, but in a very different way than black pepper or chili pepper. Since filming my review, I have used it to flavor hot sauce, mustard, and sauerkraut. And in each of those cases, it gave a very unique pop of flavor. If you like trying new spices, this is a great one to try out. If this spice was available, like dried at the shop, I would buy it because it would be like a really fun thing to play with. So uh, yeah, this is this is a cool one, and they look like little butts. That's I mean you can't go wrong, guys. Here's one that uh, I'm pretty excited about, even though I know it's probably not going to taste good. This is. An elephant apple. Elephant apples are a clump of tight, thick petals surrounding a slimy little fruit. They have a funky, garlic-like flavor, and they are used in assorted vegetable dishes out in northeastern India. Not only do they have an interesting flavor and appearance, but they are also a food source for elephants. How cool is that? They're actually so important as a food source that in India, there are laws against foraging this fruit in the wild. Yeah. Look at that. Look at it. This is weird. This is a very, very strange fruit with a really, really weird name, and I've been wanting to try this thing for a long time. Ever since I saw a photo of this thing, 
I've been wanting to try it. This is called Dead Man's Fingers. Blue tentacles growing from a tree that are filled with a watermelon flavored slime. What else is there to say? All right, so I got a spoon. I'm going to take some of this goo out. Mm-hmm. Watermelon. 100%. Excited to say I have probably the most interesting thing that I've found on this trip right here. This guy. This is Bromelia Penguin. Move over, Pandanus! Here is another fruit that looks like a big old ball of spikes. But this one is even more interesting. The penguin is related to pineapples and have a sharp, sour flavor that, while it is really tasty, it is packed full of bromelain. That is the chemical inside pineapple that causes your lips to burn. And it can even be used to tenderize meat. If you're one of those people that has a bad reaction to eating pineapple, you should probably avoid this one. But if not, it's a good one. Give it a try. I feel like I've had a lot of things that taste similar to this, but nothing quite exactly like it. I'm getting kind of like Granny Smith apple, kind of like pineapple. Um, maybe a little bit like rose apple in a way, a little floral, a little bit like kiwi, maybe. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in there. This was, this was something I was told to look for and I found it and I am amazed. Pistachios. What amazes me about nuts is that, for as common as they are, most people will live their entire lives without knowing where those nuts come from. Pistachios, believe it or not, are related to mangoes, and it actually kind of looks like a little Alfonso. The flesh of the fruit is only a very thin skin, but it does actually taste like mango. Under the skin of a fresh pistachio is that hard shell that we've all grappled with in the past. And inside that shell of a fresh pistachio, not a dried or roasted one, is a little kernel that kind of has the flavor of a nutty chickpea. So uh, yeah, this, this is uh, an incredibly interesting thing to me. Like I, I love that this exists and I had no idea where pistachios came from, honestly. So there you have it, 10 of the strangest fruits that I've come across in my travels. And again, if you want to check out more information about any of the fruit that I mentioned in this video, uh, go to the description box below. There will be links there to each episode where I did a full deep dive review into these fruits. And this was not a top 10. These were just 10 fruits that are weird in no particular order. So if you like this and you want to see more, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll make another one with another 10 fruits that are just as weird. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.